Most people believe the forts and castles in the foregone era of slave trade were built just in some few parts of Ghana. But no, the horrors of that era were felt equally almost in the entirety of the country and numerous forts hold on to stories still, some hidden and some not publicized enough, holding information which will transform the way we perceive ourselves and appreciate our land. So on this episode on incredible places and structures in Ghana, I showcase different castles and forts in the motherland that you probably didn't know existed. I'm Andy and these are Andy's insights. Let's get right into it. At number 1, Kumasi Fort and Military Museum. This fort, located in Kumasi in the Ashanti region of Ghana, was built in 1820 by the Ashanti king Osei Tutu Kwamena. This fort was built as an indigenous fort of the Ashantis as the invaders back then had deers along the shores. This fort, in my view, is supposed to be the most cherished and widely prioritized fort in the history of Ghana because it was created by us and showed the resilience, the ingenuity and charisma of the indigenes back then who have been portrayed as weak and narrow-minded but contrary to those beliefs were very smart able to adapt and create strategies which led to some victories when the odds weren't stacked against them the fort was destroyed in 1874 but built again in 1897 it was built with granite and brown soil that was brought from cape coast kumase by headquarters this fort has incredible significance to the fight against colonial in the past as the queen mother of the Ashanti, Sia Santua, leading a rebellion, trapped 29 Brits in this fort as she showed her defiance. It was later converted to the museum it is today by the armed forces of the British colonial government in 1953 after the Second World War. Today, it serves as a museum with collected items from the British Ashanti War and Second World War. This fort must be healed by us as it shows the black man of the then Gold Coast from a position of strength and will rather than weakness. At number 2, Fort Santo Antonio. This fort, also known as Fort Saint Anthony, built in 1515 by the Portuguese and was the first ever residence of whites who came to this part of the world. It is located near the town of Axim in the western region of Ghana. This fort is a historical site and famous because of its several European occupants that took turns in occupying this fort for numerous reasons each. Built by the Portuguese, it was captured from the Portuguese by the Dutch in years past and subsequently passed on to the British. The fort is now the property of the Ghanaian state and is open to the public for education on our past experiences and for reflection. The walls on this fort were so high it was near impenetrable from outside forces and prevented the indigents captured from fleeing. It was at this same fort that the governor J. M. Gomez fell to his death on seeing a boat carrying his wife on board arriving. The walls being so high caused his demise on descending with excitement which goes to show how high the walls actually were, preventing a rebellion of any kind. Most victims captured to this fort were apparently lured in by fellow indigents acting as agents for the colonizers with falsehoods on providing menial jobs which ended up being a trap and collecting fees for these acts. This fort is a huge historical site worth visiting to learn more and channel our inner selves on the path of discovering the stories of our past. If you've liked this video thus far, be sure to hit the like button right down there and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. At number 3, Fort Princess Tyne. This fort is located in Kita in the Volta region of Ghana. Many such forts were built in Africa, but Princess Tyne is one of the few that lie east of the Volta River, since many were known to be built on the western front, making it a unique fort in on its own and a very peculiar one at that. This fort story is contrary to the norm, which led to the town of Kita serving as an open port until the Temahabo commenced its operations to the west in 1962. It was initially built built by the Danish traders in 1784 for defensive purposes after the Danish and the anglo Ever war built to keep the area safe from other colonial powers. The majority of the materials, especially the stones used for the building of the fort, were sent in from Accra by the Danish people. This fort is amongst the four major structures that were built by the Danish on this side of the world. 
hence it's been designated as a world heritage property it's played a huge role during the forgone slave trade and also served an active purpose in the trade of imported and exported goods such as gold and ivory in a give and take trade for muskets brandy iron rods textiles cowrie shells and other tradable items a visit to this site is worthwhile as it holds so many tales of events compounded in the past such as the war between the anglo evers and the danish travelers at number four cape coast castle the most famous castle and fort of the bunch the cape coast castle located at cape coast in the central region of ghana was a large commercial fort built on the shore of the then gold coast of west africa present-day ghana by european traders it was originally a portuguese trading post established in 1555 which was named Cabo Corso. however in 1653 the swedish africa company constructed a timber fort making it originally a center for trade in timber and gold but was later switched and used for the west in the transatlantic slave trade this castle held the largest number of people who were mistreated in this disgusting venture of the past it's one of the perfect places in ghana for self-reflection and receiving enlightenment on the oneness of the black people as it was us that gave the power to them through overly welcoming aliens we didn't understand over the indigents and people we knew and understood perfectly the Cape Coast Castle holds many tales and hard-hitting truths of the past that as an indigent or visitor in Ghana, one must endeavor to visit to have a few of this once-in-a-lifetime experience. At number 5, Fort San Sebastian. This fort is located at Zama in the western region of Ghana. It is known to be the third oldest fortification in Ghana. It was built by the Portuguese in 1526 as a trading post and was later captured by the Dutch West Indians in 1642. The original purpose of the fort was to serve as a deterrent to English sailors interfering in Zama trade. But funny enough, it totally failed in its purpose and as we know, the British eventually took over everything. It's one of the only forts completely shrouded in mystery as most indigents don't even know much about its background story even though the first black european university professor anton wolham and most remains lies interred in the fort's graveyard it played a huge role in the forgone slave trade but its mysterious past story is the primary reason it's perfect for explorers and discoverers alike if you found this video informative and would like a second part on the fort and castle series as there are many forts and castles which weren't mentioned, let me know in the comment section below. If you also like contents like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of these. Also, check out this video next on incredible ancient places in Ghana that you didn't know existed. Thank you and on to the next video. Be sure to check this video out.